Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. This is going to be a uh, series of tutorials because it's a topic that you really can't cover anything in 10 minutes. Uh, so what it's going to be is a series of tutorials. We're going to probably scratch the surface on the first one and in the next few ones after that we will bleed more into what we're trying to do. But this one is going to cover cloning. Um, quite often in an image uh, what you have is you have um, things that you wish to take out of the image. Like if, uh, if you say this, for example, take this picture, for example, if I want this jet to appear that it's flying, I'm going to take this post out, uh, possibly remove the shadow, maybe leave the shadow in, I, I, I don't know, whatever I choose to do. But uh, the point is, is what I would like to do is I would like to modify this program to really suit the mood or the purpose in which I would want it to do. Um, cloning is basically an operation where you're going to take one part of an image, like let's say the grass down here, and replace the shadow uh, with with part of this uh, with part of this image down here. Um, there are basically several tools that I will use in a cloning operation. Of course, you can use the healing tool, the clone tool. You can use the select with a copy and paste in overlay areas on that. We're going to do all of them. Uh, use uh, sometimes the smear tool, um, a number of different tools. So why don't we just get into it and the first one that we're going to talk about is the clone tool. Now the purpose of the clone tool is is to take an area and to take that area and paint another area with actually the texture, the color, the the entire image that is uh, uh, that we have selected from the uh, source uh, image or source area. Now we're going to do this simply at first. You can copy in between layers and do all kinds of things, but this we're going to have a single layer and what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to click on the clone tool. First we're going to establish the size of the brush, which in this instance you can see is about that size. We can make it bigger, which now it's bigger, or we can make it very small, which now it's very, very small. You can barely see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this up to a big brush. And now um, I can take the area which I want to start to clone and I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to click. Now if you'll notice what you're going to do is a new reference point appears. Now when I go over what I want to clone I'm going to start at that reference point so if I start painting and move to the right that reference point also moves to the right. So as you can see I've replaced that grass or the shadow with the grass that was immediately below it. So again if I control click I can pick up an area and where it picked up part of the shadow here I can go over it and then uh, like let's say here control click and then paint over that area. Now if you'll notice there are a lot of things here. You're starting to get some hard areas and repeating patterns. We're going to talk about those in a minute but based on your brush selection you can use a hard shape brush, you can use a, um, a soft edged brush uh, depending on your brush, using a soft edge, edge brush and also you can use um, opacity. Um, opacity is a good thing that you can use too. So if you reduce the opacity and uh, paint over this area like here, and we'll like take that as our reference point, um, a lot of the hard edge is gone. But the thing that you have to keep in mind is when you use that opacity sometimes it makes the image look blurry. It depends on what you're trying to do. Like see here, if I take this, uh, another thing that you have to watch too is repeating patterns. So if I use this and a, a control click to select my reference point and paint over, now what I have to do, because my opacity, uh, opac op Opac opacity is um, actually uh, is, is lower, you'll notice it looks blurred. So that's what you have to watch. Usually you want to use 
a harder opacity than, um, that's a hard word to say, than, um, um, you know, than just, you know, it, when possible. And then you can deal with the edges. There are a number of ways to do that, though. So watch your repeating patterns. And like if you have repeating patterns, like let's say there here's some, then what you can do is you can select a different area and just go across them a little bit. But you also want to watch the paint dobs. Um, that can happen also. But we're going to have a trick in a minute. In the next video, we're, we're going to uh, copy sections with a collection or selection tool. And what we're going to do is paste them over areas instead of um, uh, just dealing with the clone tool. And then, and then in subsequent videos, what we'll do is we'll get into all the attributes of the clone tool in um, in the uh, um, you know the the selection area which uh, uh, selects the behavior of the particular tool. Um, so, anyways, um, again, if we want to reproduce an area, like let's say get rid of the shadow, it's best to get something close to it if you're dealing with grass and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll hold the control key down and click. That selects our reference point. And then we can just move over. Just before, here's what we're trying to get to. Here's a shot where I've eliminated um, that um, stanchion altogether, the telephone poles, um, the, the rack with the nameplate and so forth. And that's what we're trying to get to, to make the plane look like it's flying on its own. So basically, uh, that's what we're trying to do. But that's going to end this video. And in the next video, we're going to get into um, more cloning, but we're going to use different techniques. So thank you for watching. I hope this made sense.